Hello everyone and happy holidays! I'm back again with my second Christmas tutorial and this one is going to be a funny one. Today I'm going to be making a white elephant Star Wars adult bib. This is the perfect project if you're looking for something to get for those white elephants at the Christmas parties that you'll have coming up soon and you don't know exactly what to get. This is a quick and easy sew and you can put it together in a couple hours even if you're a beginner. It should be very simple to do. I love this fabric with the Star Wars ships as little ornaments. It's just perfect for that Christmas nerd. This fabric is still available and I will have it linked down below for you. All you're going to need for this project, one yard of fabric and one yard of lining fabric. And I'm just using a woven cotton. And you will also need 3 4 inch wide velcro. And this could be any color matching your fabric. So if you're ready to learn how to put this together, then let's get started. We're going to sketch our pattern. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line. 34 inches long. And from here, I'm going to draw a rectangle and the small sides are going to measure 10.5 inches long. I'm using tissue paper, but you can use anything that you have on hand. You can tape together a bunch of regular pieces of paper, newspaper, cardstock, anything at all. Starting back with the first line that I made, I'm going to mark my 3 inches, my 9.5 inches, and my 21.5 inches. Going across to the other side, I'm also going to mark the 21.5 inch line as well. Ignore the fact that I'm re-sketching some of the lines and marks. Apparently, I couldn't distinguish my numbers from each other in this video. And then going back to my 9.5 inch mark, I'm going to mark 9 inches from my first line as well. Once again, ignore the first mark. Starting from the 21.5 inch mark and the 34 inch corner, we're going to connect these dots using a nice big curve. And I'm just going to sketch this out as best as I can. I kind of go straight for about 2 inches and then I'll start to curve in toward each other. Then moving up to the 9 inch mark, I'm going to connect this with the 21.5 inch mark, doing a small curve from there as well. And then going from the top corner to my 9 inch mark, I'm going to continue the curve. It will be more angled than the bottom so that you kind of have like an egg shape. In the middle of the 3 inch and 9.5 inch line, you're going to measure 3 inches inward. And we're going to connect these three lines to make a sort of half circle. So this first straight edge that we drew is going to be your center fold. There is an actual simplicity pattern 2687. So if you're having a little difficulty sketching out your own, you can definitely get the pattern. This is a project you definitely want to pre-wash your fabric. So if you're using cotton, make sure to get a little more than a yard to accommodate for any shrinkage. I'm starting with my lining fabric and I'm going to fold this over horizontally. And taking my pattern, I'm going to line up the straight edge with the fold. Then I can go ahead and pin this down. Once it's pinned, we're going to cut it out. We're also going to cut the top three inches in half on the fold, but only the top. Then we're going to do the same thing in our main fabric. So this is what your piece should look like when it's cut out. 
take your Velcro, making sure both sides are aligned together, and we're gonna cut a one and a half inch piece. Since I pre-washed my fabrics, I'm going to iron out both pieces to make sure they lay nicely and to get rid of all those wrinkles from the washing. Take one of your pieces with nice side face up and lay the other piece on top with nice side face down. And we're gonna line these up as best as we can. Go ahead and pin this together. We're gonna sew all the way around the edges. We're gonna sew this together with a half inch seam allowance, leaving about a three or four inch gap on the top outer edge. This is really good sewing practice for new sewers, especially if you're learning to sew around curves. These have really big curves, so you just wanna go slow and make sure you're guiding your fabric as you go along. As we approach the first collar edge, what we're gonna do is you're gonna stop about half an inch from the edge. You're gonna lift your presser foot, turn your fabric to the new direction, lower your presser foot, and continue sewing. So you're gonna do this for every corner that you get to. Just try your best to estimate the half inch as best as you can, otherwise you can just use a small ruler to make sure. So here's what we have so far, making sure you have your four inch opening. Grab some scissors and we're gonna cut off our sharp corners. So you should have something like this, make sure not to get too close to the thread. This is gonna help our corners point out nicely when we flip it out. We're also gonna cut out little triangles around the neck collar. Make sure not to cut past the thread. If it's a dramatic curve like this, you definitely wanna cut out a little more fabric so it lays a lot nicer. I'm going to make snips around the bottom curves as well. About two and a half inches apart from each other. Once again, don't cut past the thread. And I'm just gonna add a couple up toward the top curve. We can go ahead and flip this inside out. You can use a pencil or a chopstick to help you point out those corners. Just make sure that they're not too sharp because if you push too hard, you might put a hole in your fabric. So you're just gonna push it with small pressure to get those corners pointed out. Next, we wanna lay out the seams so that they're nice and neat, and we're gonna press all the edges down so that it helps everything stay in place as we do the next part. For our opening, you're gonna tuck in the half inch seam allowance making sure to line up the edges of each layer evenly and continuing with the curve. Then we can iron this down into place. Now we're gonna top stitch. And this part can be pretty fun because if your machine can do it, you can sew on decorative stitches or you can hand stitch a decorative stitch if you'd like. So I'm gonna sew on my top stitch as close to the edge as I can get to make sure my whole stitch is on top and close to the edge. 
And I'm just gonna take my time and let my machine do what it needs to do. You can use a zigzag stitch if you're not comfortable using anything else, or a basic straight stitch is fine as well. I'm also using a contrasting thread so that the stitch pops a little more and doesn't blend into the fabric. So we're gonna do this all the way around. And then use the same pivoting techniques when you get to those collar corners. Here you can see clearly what my top stitch actually looks like up close. I think they look like little Christmas trees. So it works for me. On the collar ends, we're gonna add our Velcro. You're gonna take one piece of Velcro and place it on your right side of your bib. And I'm just placing this right in the middle and I'm lining up the short edge with the lower corner as a reference. And the other piece of Velcro will go on the back side of your bib, right in the middle. And once again, I'm lining it up with that short corner so it matches with the other one. And I'm gonna sew this down with a 1 16th inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna start sewing around the edges using my pivot technique at all the corners. Once I meet back at my first corner, I'm gonna angle it diagonally to the opposite corner. I'm gonna sew back down the short end, and then from that corner, I'm gonna go to the other opposite corner. So I create an X in the middle, and I'll sew down the short end again, just for added security. That way this Velcro isn't going anywhere. Go ahead and do the same to the other side as well. And that's basically it. Like I said, it's a quick and easy sew up and you can have a lot of fun with this by changing up the fabric and changing up your decorative stitches. You can easily adjust this as well and make it a little longer or a little shorter. And I think a lot of people would get a really big kick out of this, getting this as a white elephant gift or maybe an over the hill gift or someone who's just a really messy eater and you know might need it and you'd like to give them one for their birthday. Maybe it's just that perfect idea that you've been searching for for these holiday events coming up. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe and hit the little bell to receive notifications when I upload. And I hope to see you all next time. Bye!